Over the past 50 years, there has been a slow growth in the use of health IT. Now, with the passage of the High Tech Act, we are seeing exponential growth in the use of EHRs and other health IT applications. Has the vision been realized? In many ways, it has, but we still have a long way to go. When we opened our practice in 2008, we were motivated by several reasons to implement EHR into our um, practice. I would say the number one thing would be efficiency. Efficiency in many ways. Efficiency in terms of personnel. Could we reduce the number of personnel in our business department, in our filing department, transcription department by having an EHR? Um, could we reduce our use of paper and use of energy by having an EHR? Certainly. So there was a green concept to it, there was an efficient concept to it, and certainly with that efficiency came cost savings. We run uh, OB clinics throughout the city of Birmingham in health departments and hauling charts around from all of those clinics to a labor and delivery was A, a um, privacy issue, and B, a, just keeping up with the charts was becoming more than we could handle. So having a electronic system where we didn't have to ferry those charts around and data was available to you at your fingertips was essential. Because now, since we're an internet-based system, we can remotely uh, enter the system through Secure ID and practice pretty much anywhere. The most important thing for a healthcare provider to know is that health IT is a tool. It's a means to an end. And we don't use uh, IT because it's shiny or, or bright or gadgety, although we do like our gadgets. But the main reason to use it is because it's something that helps you do your job better. It lets you deliver better quality healthcare. So to my fellow providers who say that they don't want to use IT because uh, they feel like it's telling them what to do, I'd say back to them, you're letting the tool tell you what to do, really. Where you should start is saying what's important about the job that I do, what's important about when I do that job and where I do it and how I do it, and then figure out how you use the information tool to do your job better, to get you the information you need, where you need it, when you need it, whether that's information about the patient in front of you or about the latest guideline from your professional organization, that's how you need to think about using the IT. So healthcare IT is not all analytics. I think that the analytic piece is important because um, I think it really helps you uh, get to the, the root cause of things. But I've, I've had to get into areas about um, how to create incentive structures so that physicians who really, we're asking them to change behavior, we're asking them to do something very different. So I've had to work with my colleagues um, in the organization to come up with incentive programs that would you know, internal incentive programs that would help those physicians, um, you know, move from their current, you know, uh, workflow to a new workflow. So it's, and that required a lot of creativity. It wasn't really all about IT. So I think there is something beyond just straight analytics um, in this role. It actually is, I think I get further along in my career, those elements become more important than the analytics. So I think there's a, a real need for a helping hand. Uh, most of most providers didn't go to uh, medical school to be IT project managers, uh, and they're trying to they're trying to run their business. They're trying to see patients, and they have a waiting room full of full of patients. Their staff are, are occupied. So making this transition uh, is 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 a big challenge, and I think that that helping hand is going to be critical. We kill 100,000 people by accident in hospitals today. That's ridiculous. That shouldn't happen. We spend, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars redoing tests and doing things that we shouldn't be doing because there's no health value to doing that. But we do it because, well, somebody told us to do that in training and there's nobody to tell me any different. Uh, and I can't f communicate with, I can't get the CT scan that was done in the hospital across the street, so I've got to do another one. These are ridiculous things that information technology should have solved a decade ago, um, but it's a long, slow process. From my experience, decision support has made me a better physician. In our field of internal medicine, preventive care is extremely important. Regular colonoscopies, regular mammograms, regular glucoses, diabetes follow-up, and when you have uh, the patient's chart open up electronically to big red letters that this is due, it's very difficult to ignore that. So the decision support uh, has been effective. The, the fact is that there can be different settings for alerts. 
There may be a drug, for example, an ACE inhibitor, that the patient is allergic to. So you choose an alternative drug in a different class, but because of the makeup of those two drugs, the alert still fires. So the, that's always going to be a, a challenge. There are always going to be patients who maybe they couldn't take one statin drug, but they can take another statin drug because they didn't have an allergy, but they just had a side effect or an adverse reaction, muscle pain or fatigue. That alert's always going to fire because it's the same class. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's complex, and certainly medications and formularies and allergies are complex. There may be some systems that have some settings where those alerts can be adjusted, but when we're talking about patient safety, there's no doubt any of us who have been in the system long enough have probably been saved once or twice by an alert that did come up when we still had to, you know, not bypass, but put in the, the documentation that, no, I know that this is okay, we'll keep going. The real problems are in policy. It is in making decisions about things that people are very emotional about. Scientists have been working on this issue in the health information technology field since I was in medical school in the 60s, which is one of the reasons I got into the field is that they weren't making fast enough progress for me. I wanted to practice with a computer by my side as the sidekick who wouldn't forget things and wouldn't let me make stupid mistakes. But when I got to the point where I was going to practice, it wasn't there yet. The, the hardware and the software wasn't up to it. Today, the hardware is up to it. The software could be up to it, but um, it is so complex that it's going to take another decade or two before my vision of having the computer sidekick that prevents me from killing people by accident um, can be a reality. To get to the real potential that the High Tech Act provides, everyone has to do their part. Uh, we have to set the right policies, the certification and the standards, and the coordination uh, here at ONC. Uh, the vendors play a critical role in helping practices, particularly the smaller practices, uh, be able to achieve meaningful use and making it easy for them to do the right thing. But the real champions in this story, uh, the real heroes, are going to be the practices themselves and their staff. Uh, who do the change in workflow, the change in how care is delivered that's really going to take. Healthcare IT has made enormous strides, particularly over the last several years. We have seen that electronic health records can improve the efficiency, safety, and quality of healthcare. Are the systems perfect? No. But we shouldn't focus just on the technology. Health IT is a tool to help healthcare providers do their job better and to help patients manage their own health information. There are still challenges to reaching that goal. We need to be better at adapting technology to fit our needs. To do that will require that healthcare providers meet the technology halfway, participate in decision making, contribute to system design, modify their workflow, so that they can use health IT tools to make the changes in patient care that we all want.